It was a horrific crime. Ronnie O'Neill murdered his girlfriend and daughter and tried to kill his son. But on the night of that tragedy, a guardian angel appeared in the form of a first responder and gave that little boy a second chance at life. Tonight, an incredible story of survival and a path forward through adoption. It's a story you'll only see here on News Channel 8. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. I'm Jennifer Lee, thank you for joining us. Tonight we introduce you to the little boy who survived that horrific night and is now thriving with adoptive parents who brought him into their home. News Channel 8's Jeff Patterson joining us now with his exclusive report about little Ronnie and how Ronnie's life has changed for the better. Keith and Jen, during the trial, we were very careful to protect the identity of young Ronnie. He is a victim who managed to survive a horrific night, but now with his permission and the permission of his adoptive parents, we are sharing his story and the story of how he came to his new family. You will see who is the mass murderer. It was a trial that captivated the Bay Area and the nation. This whole entire case has been tampered with. It began March 18th, 2018. Mike Blair with the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office got a call to respond to a crime scene in Riverview. Blair has responded to hundreds of calls. This one changed his life. There was a child being medevaced to Tampa General, but he was not expected to live. Ronnie O'Neill III, accused of killing his girlfriend, daughter, and severely wounding his son Ronnie, insisted on acting as his own attorney. In one heartbreaking moment, he questioned Ronnie in court. Now how did I hurt you? Me. Ronnie the third was found guilty of murder but for Ronnie now 12 it's important to him that we remember his mother and sister she was just a good mom Kenyatta Barron was back in school attending HCC but still had time to play football with him and Ronnie had his own special way of communicating with his disabled sister Ron Nivia they did like a lot of things together she was nice in the hospital Mike Blair visited Ronnie as he recovered. He kind of held onto my hand and as I left, and he said, could you watch a movie with me? At that moment, Mike knew he had to speak with his wife. We were planning to go on a date night that night, and I said, hey, instead of doing date night, do you mind if we go watch a movie with this kid? Danielle Blair went to the hospital, where she and Mike watched a movie with Ronnie. I had already known that I would want to take Ronnie home with us starting that night. But it didn't happen overnight. Not until they received one call asking if they knew anyone who could foster Ronnie. That call became their calling. I was driving by our church when the guardian is asking, hey, do you know of somebody who can help us out? Danielle Blair had prayed for this moment. I started praying that God would soften Michael's heart and say, okay, yes, we we have a place that, that, that Ronnie belongs. Now Ronnie has a new family and five new siblings who've accepted Ronnie into their lives. One of the best moms and dads, they take care of me. It's become more than just a new house for Ronnie, it's a home. They even have a family mantra. As it goes to the family and it's I am safe, I am loved and I'm part of this family. Remarkable people. The Blairs have five children of their own, and those children actually encourage Corporal Blair to bring Ronnie into their house and into their home, into their lives. Ronnie is now receiving physical therapy for his wounds and mental health care to protect, uh, help him through this process and everything that he has gone through. What a good-looking family now, though. I think we were all captivated by this story, to say the least. And it was Ronnie's decision to speak, wasn't it? Why now? Why did this young man want to speak out? Well, he felt he was very limited during the trial of what he could say. He was very much prepared for that, but he didn't have a chance to say how much he loved his mother and how much he loved his sister. That was important to him. And for Mike and Danielle Blair, they say that horrific night was only one brief moment in Ronnie's life. It will always be part of his story, they say, but it doesn't have to define him. It's a great story. Thank you for sharing it, Jeff. Glad he talked to you, and uh, you can see more of this story. In fact, Jeff's been on top of this story from the very beginning. You can see all of his reports throughout the trial and the moments leading up to today by going to the WFLA app.